Welcome to the Dog and Vols Network. My name is Boogie Bentley. Big junior day, big time uh, recruiting event. Lot of talent on Rocky Top over the weekend. One of those being five-star wide receiver Ryan Wingo, one of the top wide receivers in the country. Now coming out of this junior day, I was reading a report from Matt Ray on VolQuest. Kind of said Tennessee made a lot of made up a lot of ground here, created a lot of momentum. They're in a good spot. With a lot of these top guys in the class of 24, a lot of five-star talent. But he said he didn't expect any commits coming out of the weekend. But Tennessee set themselves up nicely. When you look at where they're at in the class of 24, they've already got Jonathan Eccles, who is a four-star athlete, one of the top five athletes in the country. Uh, Coach Jay and I breaking down the film on him yesterday. If you missed that, go back and check it out. We broke him down as a defensive end, as an edge guy. I know a lot of you guys in the comments – talking about Jonathan Eccles being committed as a tight end. Uh, also, Caleb Beasley already in the boat, four-star corner. Ryan Wingo coming out of the visit. Somebody tagged me up on Twitter in this, and this is from his Instagram last night. Hayes Fawcett, when we posting. And you can see there, Ryan Wingo, you know the move, zero. Uh, tag me up on Twitter to take a look at that. So how close is Ryan Wingo to pulling the trigger? And it's interesting that he's hitting up Hayes Fawcett saying, hey, when are we going to post this? When are we going to let the world know coming off of his visit to Rocky Top? But again, a lot of ground made up by this coaching staff in the class of 24. We'll continue to keep it covered on that as we move forward. But I want to take a break, go back to the transfer portal, because there has been a lot of buzz, a lot of rumors about Tennessee adding a defensive back through the transfer portal. There's a name floating around out there. Is it a silent commit? Does Tennessee have a silent commit in the transfer portal? We're going to take a look at it, but as always, do me a favor. Go ahead and smash that like button just below the video. It's quick. It's free. It's easy. It helps the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, if you are new to the Talking Balls Network, welcome. We're not experts. We're not insiders. We're not media. We don't talk at you. We talk with you. That's why we'll take a rumor about Tennessee having a silent commit from a defensive back. We'll bring it here. We'll break it down. We'll talk about it. That's what we do here on the Talking Balls Network. If you like that, go ahead and subscribe. Click that bell for notifications. You won't miss out. When we go live, when we drop a video, I'll be live tonight, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, playing a little NCAA football. We'll talk some recruiting. We'll talk portal. We'll talk about whatever it is you guys want to talk about. Also, thinking about doing a basketball watch party coming up here uh, in a week or two for the Tennessee and Texas game. I know Tennessee coming off of a brutal loss, but we promise you guys a watch party, so we will probably do that for the Tennessee-Texas basketball game. So mark that on the calendars. But let's jump into it. Let's talk about it again. A lot of message board rumors, a lot of message board rumors about Tennessee possibly adding a corner via the transfer portal. Now, is there any steam to that? I've not seen anybody confirm it, but I've seen the name floating around a lot. So I want to talk about it. That is BYU corner Gabe Judy Lolly, who entered the portal back in December. And again, it's this this has been floating around for for a while now, Tennessee's going to add a corner. Be ready. Tennessee's going to add somebody today. Tony Basilio on the radio saying Tennessee's adding somebody today. Now, why have they not added this guy? If there's so much buzz, so much rumor, is it a numbers game? And, you know, I was thinking about it. All the NCAA investigation, the violation, all that stuff is should be coming down within the next week or two as far as time frame goes. But we'll see. Where is Tennessee at numbers-wise? How many guys do they have on scholarship right now? Obviously, Taven Jackson just entered the portal. That should open up a spot. Do we see Gabe, Judy, Lolly pull the trigger, or is he even interested? Is this all just message board rumor and innuendo? I don't know. I don't know, but let's take a look at it here. Uh, starting corner, Gabe, Judy, Lolly is the latest entry from BYU into the transfer portal. There you can see his post on Twitter. Uh, says, I would like to thank everyone at BYU for having welcomed me with open arms. Thank you to Coach G, Coach Kalani, and The Rock, the sports staff, every Cougar fan for your love and support this season. Uh, playing at LES is an experience that I will cherish for the rest of my life. Though my time is short, I'll always remember the people and memories I got to experience while in Provo. Uh, the program is in good hands, and I have no doubt it will continue to gain momentum and success. With that being said, I'll be entering the transfer portal with my last two years of eligibility. Thank you for it all. Cougar Nation. Uh, Cougar Nation. So he's got two years of eligibility left. Uh, before he played at BYU, he actually played at Vanderbilt as a freshman. He only played in four games, took a red shirt. Uh, sophomore year, played in seven games, but only started three, had 13 tackles. Not a lot of numbers there. But moving into his junior season, 2021, played 12 games, 50 total tackles, had an interception and a pass breakup. 
So he's got two years of eligibility left. Uh, coming out of high school, he was a three-star prospect. That's when he committed to Vanderbilt out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Now you say, what's the connection? Uh, why would he be interested? Why would he want to come to Tennessee? Uh, well, if you remember, not too long ago, Tennessee added a linebacker via the transfer portal, and that is his teammate, or was his teammate, at BYU in Keenan Peely. So he has that connection. Is he going to follow Keenan to Rocky Top? Uh, goes on to talk a little bit about his career at Vanderbilt. Started 10 games during his one season at BYU. Uh, PFF graded Judy Lolly as the second best defensive player by their advanced metrics. So when you look at stars, you look at rankings and all that type of jazz, you get upset and say, we don't need three stars. We, we need players. We need ballers. We need five stars. I think once you've been in college this long, I think the star system does not matter. So again, at starting 10 games at BYU this year, graded out as the second best defensive player. 6'2", 185 pound defensive back, finished with 46 tackles and seven pass breakups in 2022. Now, again, this is all message board rumor, message board talk. That's what we're bringing to you. But a lot of the guys on VolQuest were talking about this kid, and somebody said seven pass breakups is pretty good. I would go on record of saying that that's probably more than any defensive back on Tennessee's team for 2022 and it was i forget who led the way somebody had six and then it was just down the line from there so gabe judy lolly had more pass breakups than anybody in the tennessee secondary in 2022 it goes on to say here of all the transfer portal entries from byu players during the 2023 cycle judy lolly's might be the most surprising he was projected to be one of the top defensive players in byu's first year in the big 12 conference uh, goes on to say they do have a new defensive coaching staff under the direction of defensive coordinator Jay Hill, but cornerbacks coach Guilford was retained on Hill's staff. Uh, he was the top recruiter landing Judy Lolly out of the portal last March. So again, Gabe Judy Lolly entered the portal back in December. There was a lot of buzz, a lot of speculation that he could end up on Rocky Top. Uh, a lot of, lot of talk about a possible silent commit. How true is this? How accurate is all this? Again, message board rumor, but what do you think about Gabe Judy Lolly and what he brings to the table being graded out as the second best defensive player, seven pass breakups. That's what I like. We need corners that can cover. We need to upgrade the corner position. Now would Gabe Judy Lolly be an upgrade? Would he come here and start? I don't know. I think he would come here and compete. I think he would make his way into the rotation, but would he come here and be a starter? I don't know. Or is it just another dude? Is it just another body? Is Gabe Judy Lolly the type of guy that you want to add, or do we need more dogs? Do we need more talent? Is it not good enough? Is adding a BYU linebacker and a BYU corner not good enough? If you could add Gabe Judy Lolly, you would have taken BYU's best defensive back, and you would have taken their team captain. You know, I think if you can pick and choose some of the top players off of a team like BYU, you may be able to set yourself up pretty good for a 2023 at a position of need. We've been talking about the corner position forever. Of course, the kid from Georgia entered last week. That's the type of dog you really want to go get. But would Gabe Judy Lolly satisfy you? Would he satisfy that need in the secondary? Hit the comment section. Let me know. Uh, as always, guys, make sure you do smash the thumbs up. That's quick, free, and easy, and I would appreciate it. It does help the channel. Uh, also, go check out the merchandise of the Talking Balls Network. You can go to bonfire.com slash store slash talking balls any and all support greatly appreciated as always uh thank you to the members of the channel uh, you guys continue to show your support show your love for the talking balls network uh, you can get in for that for 99 cents a month just 99 cents that's it if you listen to every video if you like the live streams if you like the content if you like the talking balls network and you can afford it you got an extra dollar hit that join button down below as little as 99 cents a month you get access to custom talking balls emojis fan call-in shows watch parties all kinds of perks and benefits. I try to highlight the member comments on air when we're live. Uh, but you guys are supporting what we do around here, and I appreciate that. Thank you for that support. Uh, like I said, hit the comments. Let me know your thoughts. Hope to see you guys tonight, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time for a little Talking Balls Live. But that's going to do it for this one. This is the Talking Balls Network. My name is Boogie Bentley. Go Big Orange.